Hello, my name is Abe, welcome back to the real run of Inscription as we try the Bone deck here. I'm having a bad time with the Bone deck, but I'm not a, I'm not a big fan of the Bone cards to begin with. You know, Coyote for four bones? It's kind of hard to get four bones early. I need the, uh, the boon of the Bone God to get eight bones on my starting hand. Bone, 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 bone. We're gonna go four, one damage, regular non-rare cards, and I'm gonna go for, gonna go for the totem fights, I think still. I think that, I think it's easier than stronger creatures. Cause in the early game, a totem might not matter at all, but the strong creatures, that's more HP you've got to punch through and you might just literally not have the damage to do it. You might be relying on the enemy to just kind of run out of cards so you can kill them. So I think it's actually a little bit easier to have the totem fights. Because in particular, you know, one totem on the boss fight, one totem on a normal fight, plus one, plus one, that's gonna be for all fights. We could do it though, and then I'd probably take uh, no clover. Oh, but one damage on your side of the scales, plus one, plus one, ugh. Oh, let's give it a shot. I gotta, you know, learn how the plus one works. Let's do it. Okay. I would I would also really like to get this done at some point. Field mice wolverine probably won't happen. Hello. Field mice wolverine. Don't see him. I do see a mantis, which I'm gonna take pretty much immediately. We're gonna try to upgrade the mantis. And I kinda like Warren. Playing it to get sigils is kind of nice. Kind of like a beaver to create dams, but it is two cost. Does anything here work well with direwolf pup? I mean, actually, what about direwolf pup inside of the mantis, man? Mantis man. I do like that as an upgrade. Um, possum, skink, bullfrog. I think skink could still work well, but... I think we'll take makeshift mantis god Warren, which it basically turns mantis into a mantis god, let's be honest. And plus one attack means we have a turn one KO in the mantis. <laughs> Are we gonna go for the, uh, the big plays? I mean, yes. Now we have a turn one KO. We have a turn one KO. Oh yeah, because it's not actually a Mantis God. We do need it to get the upgrade. But now that we have it, maybe we can skip all of these fights with stronger, harder enemies. You know what I mean? Now just never have any other card in your deck and you're, you're fine. Magpie, Skink, Turkey, Vulture. Um, We could put flying in the mantis so it can fly over, but I actually think it being stronger, upgrading might be better. It won't get the ability to hit in the center. That's unique to the dire wolf pup, but it will upgrade. But maybe we prefer flight. Maybe we prefer flight and just have the uh, flight and hoarder. Mantis God gives us a card and then also can just hit to face. You know? Kinda like that. We're just gonna make a uh, a turn one Mantis God, I think. So we're gonna, we're gonna magpie our Mantis. That's pretty good, you know, two sigils for the cost of one upgrade. It draws a card. It has flying, it'll hit over enemies. All we have to do is block until we play the Mantis. So on this turn, all we gotta do is block. All we gotta do is block, you got it. All we do is block, wait for the Mantis. Um. We might have to use the squirrel if we draw the mantis. We didn't. Hmm. 
Mantis will still win it for us. It'll just be a little slower than we would like, I think. <laughs> and I think I have to use the squirrel. Yeah. Actually, you know what? We can play Direwolf Pup and the Coyote. And then next turn when we draw Mantis God, we can replace the Coyote with a Mantis God and then just go to town. Good to know that when you have uh, nothing in your draw pile, it doesn't force you to draw anything. Like you don't get starvation off of that. I feel like merging is always better when you're trying to keep your deck thin. <sighs> Bugs, birds, hey, bug. Ooh, a cockroach! That would be so good with the mantis. Oh wait, we already did something with it. But it's not bad. Because a cockroach on a warren is very interesting. Every time you pl it keeps coming back, every time you play it, you get a, a bunny which allows you to replay it on the next turn. I feel like that's pretty good. It's like an infinite blocker. Okay. Hmm. We can get a totem. So right now, pronghorn, huh? Oh no, what we want is we want wolf puppy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So give me a warren. This is the other good thing about the warren, I think, is that because we, the rabbit comes back as well. It's so good. Oh my God, I didn't even think about it. So we got a rabbit, we got a warren, we got a rabbit, we got a rabbit. The rabbits just block shots, who cares? Yo, this is such a great combination. Now the warren doesn't do any damage, but we're almost infinite here. Draw Mantis. We drew a raccoon, which is still fine, because we can rabbit, kill the rabbit, get a rabbit, play the raccoon, have a rabbit, play the rabbit. You know what we need, and this is gonna require a second Warrens, but if we can make the Warrens buff over time, then we can get the rabbits buffing over time and the rabbits can actually do damage. But this is a very, like, great opening here, isn't it? Um, I mean, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna do as much damage to face as I can, let's be honest. I guess we would have done more by replacing the raccoon, but it's fine. We're killing the pronghorn anyways. Mealworm? Mealworm! I guess you would sacrifice mealworm to get the warrens out. A mealworm being infinite would be very interesting. Okay, now we gotta think about this. Because the mealworm, if we play it for bones, we can give something else health. We gotta think about what we're doing here. Um, We don't have the bones necessary for this, I think, right now. We're almost there, but we're not quite there. I kind of like Pronghorn in the wolf pup. Ashen Ran, welcome. Infinite rabbit and infinite bees are really good. I tried bees previously, now we're at rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Latem, welcome. How are you doing? Would it be better to sacrifice Warrens first so you can play it again for more rabbits? Uh, well, if the rabbits are also infinite, I guess it doesn't matter how many rabbits we actually have. You only need four, right? One for each column in your deck. Um, I think there is a maximum hand size as well, but I think it's like 30. So at that point, you don't really need any more rabbits. When a card bearing the sigil is sacrificed, it adds stats. I see. So we can we can put this sigil on like the raccoon and then sack the raccoon. 
And then if you play the raccoon, you can add one one to something by playing that other other unit. So mealworm on like a warren would be fine. I also like the pronghorn on the dire wolf pup because then it'll turn this into a, uh, a three hitter. It'll hit left, center, and right. Rabbit with fly protection, he'd become invincible. I mean, I was really hoping to get rabbits that would get stronger over time, but we need, uh, well, we need the dire wolf pup's ability on the warren, which requires us to get another warren. Mealworm is interesting, I, I gotta, I gotta admit. Mealworm on a raccoon, and then the raccoon being able to get merged inside of something else is kind of cool. I do like... I still like Pronghorn on the Dire Wolf Pup. It's a, it's a good, strong unit that we can play. It'll do a lot of damage, as long as we keep it alive for one turn. Kind of like that. And we can meld it right here. I don't think we need to worry about the two totems. I think I'd like to just keep a, a thin deck. We have a scavenger coming up, but it's fine. We have infinite rabbits. So the direwolf pup moves as well, but it will hit more, more times, which I like. Dude, our deck is so good. Okay, please make my bees better. And by bees, I mean bunnies. Bunnies aren't a type, are they? I guess we have wolves. He is a makeshift mantis god now, but only after he upgrades or like, you know, transforms, right? Okay. Hello, friend. I'll play the pliers if I can, I think. We didn't quite get our synergy, but that's fine. What we will do is we will play Dire Wolf Pup. It'll move once, upgrade, and then it'll be a J uh, opposite of the Coyote, and then it'll smack him. So we want to do it like this. We want to play the Dire Wolf Pup here. It'll move at the end of its turn. It'll be safe. It'll kill a Coyote next turn. It'll upgrade. It'll hit three spaces. We love it. So these sigils, how they interact is that it'll hit once to the left, once to the center, once to the right. This one, uh, bifurcation, it subtracts one attack from the middle to add two attacks to the sides. So this one adds one attack to the middle. So they kind of cancel each other out a little bit. How many bones? I have enough bones, so if we draw, I was gonna say if we drop bees, we'll be happy. And the mantis is fine. I really wanna kill the pack mule, but we're actually going to not. No, actually, hold on. We might still get there. Pack Mule's gonna get away. Because we're gonna enter the next phase in one attack. And if we do that, the Pack Mule goes uh, goes away. But we can still kill immediately with the Mantis, so I guess I'm not worried. Yeah, we, the problem with this fight is that we can't kill both our Dire Wolf and the Mantis. We have to keep one for phase two. <laughs> Mule uh, disappeared on this. It doesn't. I mean, not not like it matters, because you're still dead, my dude. Yeah. Ashen Rand says, "Hey Abe, I love Helldivers too. It's stupid. I try hard difficulties alone. I can manage. I don't know with my buddies." Ashen Rand, I'm glad you're enjoying Helldivers. I'm loving it. We should play at some point. Uh, I'm currently in the process of getting my second computer set up so I can stream it but uh, I'm not quite there yet. One day I'll get there. Black goat, we don't need mealworm. I, I understand the value now. Put mealworm sigil in something else, you get free stats. I like it. Ooh, do 
duplicate the mantis. Hmm. Maybe we can get a good card. Let's see. I think we want sigil. Sigil health bones. Whoops. We have a lot of sigils. I mean, there's se several cards where if we draw them, we're immediately there. This one has four. What the heck? Okay, so a mealworm. Opposing creatures also provide bones when perishing. Mealworm draws a card. Sparrow has unkillable, and it creates ants that are also unkillable? And a mole, which pops up to block enemies and has sharp quills. And it also is one of the two cards I think I need. But like, infinite ant is really good with the infinite bunnies. But Mealworm is also really interesting because we can put these sigils on another card. You know, we can put uh, Mealworm on Kyo uh, Raccoon, and then it's going to draw a card when we play it, and then also give stats to something else. No, we actually, we can't do that. We can't sack, we can't merge any of these cards. I have to remember. I'm like, if we play the Sparrow and the Warren, we can fill the board with ants immediately, I think? Because the ants will also get unkillable and flying. Actually, they might not get flying. I think they might only get the sigils that are pasted onto the card. I, I think Sparrow is acceptable, though. Mole solves a problem we were having previously, which is how do you deal with enemies that you that burrow and the spikes would do it. But I'm going to take the Sparrow here. One of these days, though, I really have to... Uh, I have to uh, do the board here. Oh, it's Field Mice Wolverine! Yeah, let's not worry about it then. I really like, I didn't use the pliers. I like this path for the merging, because then we can put Mealworm in something, but I also do want a second Mantis. Let's be honest. I mean, honestly, I'm saying honestly a lot, honestly, but honestly, if we can get a, uh, it's got more damage. If we get the um, mushroom, I'll be more than happy to mushroom this unit. Moving birds. I mean, give me a mantis. You gave me a sparrow. And a mealworm. Also, the ant did not get any sigils. Ah, uh, wait. Hmm. Does the ant... I really thought the ant would get sigils. Why does the ant not get any sigils? Bees give you sigils. The, uh, the rabbits give sigils. The ants don't get sigils? What? They get sigils if they're on the ant queen, so why is this different? I, I, this is what I don't understand about the game. I, I don't understand why the ants are not having any sigils on them. Like, I just don't, I just don't get it. Why do they not have any sigils? May, it might be because we didn't add it. It was just a, a, a sigil that was on the card when we found it. I, I don't know. Hold on a second. Inscription, why do some cards not get sigils. Why do some created cards not get sigils? 
I don't understand ability transferred to created cards. The Ant Queen gives you Ant, the Beaver plays Dam. Sometimes if you've given those cards abilities, the newly spawned cards will also have those abilities. Ants are the only created cards that don't inherit added sigils. Rabbits, dams, and chimes can attack. Bees can only be summoned if the bee hit cre was hit. Tails require you to buff the creature before they can attack. Ants can be powerful on their own, so the fact that they don't inherit sigils is part of the balancing. Created cards only inherit additional sigils from the card that created them. They don't inherit natural sigils. If you put the beaver's sigil on a porcupine, the dams do not gain sharp quills, but if you put sharp quills on the beaver, they would gain it. So ants don't, that's all. But I thought the ant queen did. I might be wrong about that. I really thought the ant queen did. In any case, there is still a uh, cool synergy here, which is we can get infinite bones. So by getting infinite bones, we can play the coyote and the mealworm on this turn. We would actually like to have, uh, in this deck, I think we would like to have a card that gets more damage depending on how much attack we have, because we could, we could make that happen very easily. So this is fine. We can just create more next turn if we want to. Uh, but I think we're already at lethal. Yeah, and then in theory, you do this. Now the Warren all of a sudden has four health. And then if we could, the rabbit doesn't though. If we can make that, uh, that card come back, we can just keep sacrificing it over and over again. Okay. So ants don't. I thought the ant queen did, but ants don't. Okay. I'll try to try to keep that in mind. We're gonna, we're gonna have to add a lot of cards here, I think. Uh, so raccoon, we already have one. Pronghorn is not bad to add for its effects. We already have that on the dire wolf pup. Raccoon, I guess we could merge the raccoons. It's a a garbage sacrifice card. We can toss out there. I guess black goat is always pretty good. We can play Direwolf Pup on it immediately, I guess. Um, I think we'll take the goat. Mushroom's on the other side, unfortunately. Give me an opossum and give me another opossum. Just boulders, boulder blockers. So again, we have the sparrow which we can utilize to get infinite bones to play the mealworm. For what purpose? I, I don't know, okay? I don't know. But at least we get a lot of bones, you know? Yeah, and the goat is good in case we get more expensive cards in the deck. We don't have to play around it right now, but for later we can. You know what I like? I like the fact that we can use the Sparrow as an infinite blocker because we can sack the Sparrow and then replay the Sparrow to refresh its health against like a porcupine, which actually makes me want to do this. Just give it more health. Well, oh, I messed up. Let me try it one more time. <laughs> Put you there. Put you there. Now we get the ant out. We can play another ant, actually. Actually, this is what you do. Now we can get create infinite ants. Right? Yeah, yeah, that seems good. That's a, a created card, porcupine. And then you play a sparrow. You play the ant. We can sack this ant 
and then refresh its health, <laughs> which is a very like cool thing. Uh, I'm noticing though that the sparrow did not keep the health buff from the uh, the mealworm. It only it's a one time only thing. If you replay the card, you lose the buff that you just had on it. Good to know. Good to know. Um. I mean, we can we can engineer some overkills. I think. No, because you can't you can't kill a unit just willy nilly. There's no hammer. I, I wish there was a hammer, but there's no hammer. Um. Okay, so just. I mean, we're gonna we're gonna get four. We're gonna get five. God, I hate that so much. Yeah, we can get infinite bones, but that doesn't do much on its own. We don't have a card that synergizes off of that. Although we do have the ability to take bone cards. We have to take one. Let's take the bird. All right. Plus two HP. You know, a 3-3 three, three Mantis is pretty good. A 4-3 Mantis is pretty good. Warren might be a nice play just to block more. Uh, the Sparrow... The, the health buff won't affect the Sparrow. The health buff will affect the Mealworm, but we we've, we've understand now it's not that good. Anything that can be replayed infinitely, I don't think we need. I am a big fan of the Warren, though. Big fan of the Sparrow, too. I'm gonna put it on the Sparrow. It, it's actually a really good card with the buffs that it has. But I'm not gonna risk it again. We're just gonna take it. I know we could try to go for card removal, but I think I just want the card. Totem and unit merging, I like it. Raccoon, Mealworm, and a Squirrel. We can't get Wolf Pup out immediately, which makes me very sad, because it makes me wonder what we're gonna do about this combat, because we're gonna take four damage on the first turn. This guy's gonna move to the right and flip the rabbit over. Keep that in mind. So I think we, uh, I think we squirrel. And then end turn. Hey, what are you doing? I got a plan. The plan is that now we can play the wolf pup here. It'll move here, then get upgraded, then kill and kill. Uh, kill the wild bull on the next turn. And heck, it's gonna have more health too, which is kind of nice. So it'll kill the wild bull, it'll kill the porcupine, it will move, but it's got seven health. It should be fine. I could put a squirrel in the way to block a hit. Kind of like that. We're only taking one, actually, and the dire wolf is going to block the hit anyways. I, th I, I think we're fine. We're not dead. We need to chase down the elk, actually. So the dire wolf on this turn moving over one is perfect because it'll block the elk shot. Oh, never mind. We have Mantis God. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mantis God is worth playing on this turn. It will live, it'll do damage to face, and we're gonna kill him on the next turn. I should have drawn the other Mantis.
We do need to kill you before the other bull comes out, though. That's a lot of teeth. Not as many as I thought, though, but enough. Yes, and I really like this path. We do have one uh, head, I think. I don't know where to see the head that we have. I thought we took one. I thought we took like a wolf head, but the unit merging I like. We can merge the mantises. We don't need a seven two. <laughs> you know, maybe we're better off going for upgrades. Or maybe we're better off going for totems. I really like having two mantises in the deck. We don't have any other duplicates except for the mantises. They would be forcibly merged. It would be a 7-2 with flying. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna... Let's get some totems. I wanna see what we get. Actually, if we get a duplicate here, we need the Wolverine. Then maybe we can do something, but we didn't. We need duplicate and field mice. We're not gonna take field mice. Magpie, expensive, Wolverine bones. I mean, you know, it is a bone card and we have infinite bone synergies, so I'll take it. I think it actually can work. We do need to get a, uh, a field mice. I'm not gonna merge the mantises, so we're gonna go for totems. I love the mushroom men, but I wish you could choose. Um, wolves fly means that dire wolf pup is more likely to get a KO, but wolves providing bones, it's not the end of the world. Deer? I mean, if I can get black goat to, you know, be endless or something, that would be fun. I'm gonna take the head and we'll just get hopefully a new body here. Wolves flying makes the Wolverine useless. True, but I think it's, oh, that's what we want. I think it's not that bad just because we're just waiting for the mantises anyways. You know, we're going for face. Uh, this though, skink, means that my wolves would move and avoid damage, or we can make them all endless and resummonable, like the wolverine would be nice. Coyote coming back with bones, that's pretty good. Yeah, I kind of like that. We could also make the uh, black goat be endless, but I think we want wolves. Honestly. Oh, you know what? Wolverine isn't a type. It's not a wolf. It doesn't have the wolf sigil. Uh, isn't, well, not sigil. It doesn't have in the left corner a shadow of a wolf. So I think the Wolverine does not count as a wolf card, which is very interesting. I guess a wolf. It's not Wolverine. It's Wolverine. It's like a small mammal, right? So. The only endless ones would be Coyote and Dire Wolf, which are still pretty good. When we play the Warren, we'll go infinite with the Dire Wolf anyways. We can replay it, so. Yeah, let's make the, um... We'll make the, uh, Wolves endless. That's a pretty good combo. Anything endless, I think, is very good. And with Trapper, we can just use our Wolf to take the damage, I guess. Mm. Or ants, I guess, would be better. I'd love to get another... What's it? Mag no, sparrow? I'd love to get another Sparrow and then do some more melding and then maybe get the ants with buffs, but I think the ants don't get the buffs because I guess it's too strong. Go figure. Uh, we can get the Wolverine. Black Goat... Not really a point in the black goat, but let's get started.
I mean, I, I like this turn, actually, because we can kill two of the strange frogs in one turn. And it doesn't cost us anything. It costs us the free ants, which who cares, right? Place and smoke. Actually, you know what? No, no, this will still work. This will still work. This is a good bone setup we've got here. Dun, dun, dun. Um, I guess I would like to play the sparrow. We'll kill the other, the number two strange frog. Sparrow will die, doesn't matter. Why'd you have so much health? I guess I buffed your health previously. Makes sense. Endless coyote. I, I, with endless coyote, I mean, that's an endless coyote. That's an endless uh, sparrow. We can actually fill the board with this combination with four ants. Which I didn't think about that until just now, but we absolutely can do that. some way to go. So we have an adder coming out. Don't really care that much. Um, I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to wipe the board right now. Like, why not? We might need another uh, squirrel to do it, but... You Sparrow. You get your coyote back. You can play the coyote for free for the bones that you're playing, and then you can just use the sparrow. To get more ants out, and then you can play the coyote. You can sack it for the sparrow. Get another ant out, all of a sudden, Wolverine. Gets rid of the adder on the board. We've got some synergy. We, what I like about this deck right now is that we have more than one win condition. We have different ways that we can maybe not go infinite, but play str a strong deck, you know? Oh, I've got another one. Uh, okay, give me, uh, give me a wolf. Added to my hand, it's now infinite. Anyways, we uh, play the coyote, we play the sparrow, it generates an ant. The ant replaces the sparrow, we're going to hit you for a ton of damage. I still have more ants in my hand too. I like it, I like it. You know, we've got the mantis which can one turn KO the uh, the, the Leshy here, whatever his fight is. We've got the Ant Synergy, we've got uh, Wolf Cub. Elk Fawn, Elk, River Snapper. And have lots of teeth. Um, I suppose I don't mind. Like, River Snapper as a blocker is pretty good, but we have blockers in the Warren and the Sparrow. They're both great blocking cards for us. Do we need another one? I need to thin out the deck a little bit. So what are we going to start merging here? We could put Elk Fawn on the Mealworm, and then when the Mealworm grows up, it'll be more stats for sacrificing, I guess. It's only a one-turn sacrifice, but, you know, whatever. Uh, there's no duplicates. We don't really have any other high damage cards, so Elk Fawn doesn't really do that much. But I guess we could put this on the Coyote and maybe make the Coyote infinitely playable. I don't know if it's still going to be four bones when it evolves, though. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I'm 
trying to think. Uh, Wolverine on Elk Fawn? No. I, I like it's another bone card. You know, we need more bone cards. Uh, I guess out of this, I do like the Elk Fawn, but maybe we just want like a big body blocker like the River Snapper, another blocker. Damage doesn't seem to be a problem, so I'll take it. Let me think. So this should be the uh, the river one, the Angla. Hello. Sigils, please. Kin, sigils, and attack power. I mean, we have a few strong units, but I think we still want sigils. Which I think is me, it's an indication that the deck is strong when we go for the sigils here, because that means we have a highly upgraded cards, you know? There's Field Mice, so we can get the Wolverine play. Field Mice is a very good card, because it's infinitely playable. It has Burrower, it has Double Strike. Um, Alpha, though. It, Alpha is very interesting. Dam Builder, Waterborne Leader means that it will buff the dams that it creates, which will also... It'll buff the dams it creates, which will also have leader and buff adjacent symbols, or will the dam get leader because not, will they not get leader because it's a base card, or like a base sigil, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna take the field mice and it, it's a good card on its own. And we can uh, hopefully open up another uh, slot on the door, is what I'm thinking of. I see another copier up ahead. It's either that or removal. Uh, I think I would prefer the copier just to make another... Just to make another Mantis. We're not playing the Mantis, but that's not because the Mantis is a bad card, it's just we haven't drawn the Mantis yet. Or you know what, what if we dupe the Field Mice and then merge them later? Field Mice is a good card to have more than one of. For now, I think we're gonna go right. I think the Duplicator is high value. We can make Lizards immortal. So that means River Snapper. And that's it. Uh, I don't think I care. So I'll take the head and then just continue Immortal World, Immortal Wolves, because it is a cool bone combo with the coyote. Stinky Crows. Just draw, draw my, this is a terrible play. I was gonna say draw my, This is not good. Draw my uh, mantis. Draw my mantis. You wouldn't. You wouldn't do this. We're dead on turn one unless we do something. Uh, so I think what we do is we stop the coyote from spawning. Alternatively, we can bottle the coyote and stop the kingfisher from spawning. That'll buy us some time. Just need to draw better cards. Hey, there we go. Now you're stinky though. That's a bit of a problem. I still think you do it. Like, I mean, let's be honest. Cause you're not gonna kill me. You're gonna go directly for face, right? Yeah, you're a Kingfisher. And then we'll pull out the... Pull out the other Mantis for a second. I don't think we're gonna need it. Like, I think we're gonna be totally fine. And there's always a possibility that we can use this fight to get our Unlocks. Just trying to think. We're doing four. We're taking 
three. So next turn, we're gonna overkill you. So I will wait one turn. I'm like, is there a way we can super overkill you? I think the answer is no. I mean, Amantis is does a pretty good job. Like Mantis. I think I'm just gonna be like, okay, this is fine. Get out of this stinky fight. I don't like the birds. I don't want to be st stinky fighting all the time. Bullfrog, Kingfisher, Rat King. I do like a Kingfisher. I've learned to like this card anyways. Bullfrog, uh, you know, put it on the river snapper. Kingfisher though, burrowing. We could burrow a Wolverine. He could just stay alive and hit, 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 maybe. But it would also fly, so it would never hit enemies. It would just hit face. Uh, Rat King for bones. We could put this on the coyote, and then we'll have a coyote that gives us infinite bones. That would be, that's a really funny play. The coyote, when you play it, gives you the bones to play the coyote, and then, because it's infinite, we can use it as another, like, infinite card creator, in theory. But I mean, come on. I would be a fool for not going for a duplicate. The real question is, what do we duplicate? I do like the duplication of a field mouse so that we can merge them later, potentially, and they'd be a very good unit. But I think you gotta just say, hey, also Mantis. Like, Mantis is good. Because if you draw the Mantis, you just kill the enemy. It doesn't matter what you're fighting. And now this Mantis will give us dams, which is very interesting. It won't hit face, but it's still a good card. Bugs that get stronger when they get a kill. Could be dangerous. Especially with the Warren that we're gonna be putting out there. Uh, right now we're taking one, two, three, four, five damage on turn one, which kind of blows. But with our infinite Warrens, we can at least do some stuff. I mean, we can play our entire hand, which I like. You're hitting face, you're hitting face. We're actually taking three damage right now, which is a little dangerous. Um, but if we wait one turn, we can play the raccoon and the rat king to get some kills, but we're not hitting the enemy. Um, I, I, I still think we just wanna take the damage. No, we can, we can play a, a raccoon here and kill the bee. Actually, you know what? We can play the raccoon here and kill the bee and get one damage on the field. I could play the Rat King here and kill this bee next turn as well. And we can still just play everything because the Warren is a great card for us. Um, I like it, I like it a lot. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, I think this is good. We're gonna do three damage, we're gonna take three damage, we'll be even. See the mantises. Um, we need cards, because we have infinite rabbits. Field mice is a great card. Um, if we replace the raccoon, we can kill a mantis before it even comes out. This worker ant 
I have nothing that can kill it, but as long as I put something in front of it, it'll it'll block it forever. So we have infinite rabbits, so I don't see the problem. Or I could just play another field mouse, I suppose. We're gonna do two damage to face. If I play you, we're gonna do another two damage to face. Actually, if I play the field mouse, I can't kill the the uh, bee. So why don't we just play a, a rabbit and turn. Mantis is dead. The rabbit will die. Oh, and then we're gonna take two. That's fine. Oh, no, we uh, lost our other field mouse, which is fine. It's not bad. In fact, it doesn't really matter at all. Mealworm. Actually, I do like the field mouse. Um, you're gonna do four damage. You're gonna do five damage, so the field mouse will die regardless. I can't kill the mantis because of the stump, which is annoying. Another worker ant coming out. Uh, I mean, we can we can just go to face and kill, so we'll do that. Grab it, grab it. Field mouse, rat king still out there. The warren, warren out. Uh, I think I made a mistake though. I was gonna give it the the mealworm buff, but I think I didn't. That's fine. Can't really stall, but that worker ant getting stronger was worrying me. Don't have any pelts, but at least we don't get to add a card here. And I would like to get some more items. So we're going for the backpack. There's a mushroom, mushroom. Scissors. Always scissors. There's two mushrooms. We can do a merging and a mushroom. This could be amazing. Oh, hey Mantis. I wanna see what this does. But this is also, no, it's not really a fight that we can stall forever on. But I wanna see what this Mantis does. Give me a uh, field mouse. Give me a Wolverine. I get to add three cards to my hand. <laughs> okay, the Mantis is pretty good. I, I like that. Now, I, I wish I could sack the dam, but I can't. And you're also dead, which is very funny, but yeah, that's that's pretty good. I guess if I wait long enough, the Grand Fur and the Dam will die, and then I can play the uh, Field Mouse and the Wolverine. You know, this seems like not a bad turn to do that on. Ah, oh, but this Dam will never get destroyed. So what's gonna happen next turn? You will hit face, you will hit the tree, you will kill my dam. Do we stall here? Do we try to stall? We could stall. I could also just wipe the board of their sigils, theoretically, and then maybe the Kingfishers would unburrow next turn. I have to get rid of the Mantis. But I can't get rid of, the I actually, I don't think I can stop this. I think there's nothing I can do to stop from killing you because I can't sacrifice any of those cards. I can only sacrifice the Mantis. Okay. Well, no, hold on. If I sac okay, if I sacrifice the mantis, play a mantis, draw another card, I could get like the burrow, and then that would work. We have another mantis in the deck, so we can just play this later. But if I get like maybe the sparrow would be nice.
Am I gonna do this? I think we have two lives. I'm gonna do this. I think I'm gonna do this. Let's get some bones. Doesn't hit the stump. No, we have flying. The stumps do not, his stump does not have flight protection. My tree does on my side. That's the problem. There's a raven coming in. I need to do four damage, which I can't do. The coyote will do one damage, damage to the raven and then one damage next turn. We will take two damage to face. I think that's acceptable for now. Yeah, Sparrow is just gonna hit. Raven's gonna die. We have another Raven coming out. We gotta do something about that Raven. I, I need a higher damage card. This'll do it. This'll do it. Because right now we're going to take two damage next turn. I need to do more, which I think means I need a field mouse where the sparrow is. Let me uh, just use the warren. <laughs> That way I can uh, get a couple of rabbits in my hand. Use the rabbits as uh, playable cards here. Wolverine needs to go here anyways. Uh, the field mouse here is really just to get some damage dealt. And we get a second one in hand anyways. Coyote can get the kill there. So we're gonna do three, we go fine. It, it's taken a minute, but everything is going fine. Now, we play the field, draw a card. We play the field mouse. Here. Play the Wolverine here. Haha! -ha! Mission accomplished. Let's go. And we're doing four damage to face. We don't need the Wolverine anymore, so what I'm gonna do is play a rabbit. I'm gonna play the pup. Four, five, six, seven. You don't fly, you don't fly. So it's only three. It should still be enough. You should be dead next turn thanks to the wolf pup hitting. Damn, that's a fancy damn. This is uh, this is going very well. And then I guess you just you just play whatever you got. Not much overkill, but it doesn't matter. We picked up what we needed. The heck is this? Magnifying glass. The magpie's glass. Search your card or search your deck for a card, maybe? Got rid of the opossum. I'm gonna assume it is search your deck. I'm just gonna look for it real quick. You will search your deck for any card and take it into your hand. There you go. That's, oops, sorry, wrong buttons. Solid get. It's a solid card. So we have a mushroom coming up. We have a sacrifice coming up. Cockroach! My god. 
cockroach mealworm. No, cockroach. Hmm. What do we cockroach? Can we cockroach anything? We could take a mealworm. I don't think we need it. Uh, a beaver with the dam builder. Maybe we could give something else damnable abilities. With the with the cuckoo, I think it would summon three broken eggs, which would be very funny. Um, I I'm I'm interested in the cockroach. I just don't know what I would put it inside of. The mealworm's another body blocker, I suppose, but we've got a, a mushroom coming up next. Uh, do we have duplicates? It's going to be Mantis Mantis, I think, right? Yeah. Should have duped the field mice, but two mantises, you know, we'll have like a 7-2 or something. It's pretty good. I think it'll be the first and last one, so I think we're going to have uh, Flight and Dam Mantis being separate, which is totally fine, because one mantis can pull the other mantis. If we take Mealworm, we can make a better Mealworm, but... Do we need health? Probably not. So I'm leaning cockroach. We have infinite bones, so. Yeah, we could give a uh, rat king to the cockroach. So every time it gets played, it gives us bones, but yeah, I'll take it. It's not, not what I was looking for, but I'll, I'll still take it. We can make a card infinite. We can make an infinite, infinite Wolverine. That's pretty good. Infinite Coyote. Coyote is already infinite, I suppose. So we don't need to put infinite on the Coyote. We could put it on the Wolverine and get another bone card that's infinite. I do like that. Also, put the mealworm on the coyote. I mean, that's a lot of damage. If we ever draw the black goat, we can give something one health. Um, you know, because the coyote's already infinite, it being able to be sacrificed and then give a unit to one, it's not bad. That's a lot of damage free. I mean, I could I could use the coyote to give ants more damage, I think. The sparrow as well. That's a play. Yeah, let's make this coyote give stats. I think that's weird. We need duplicates. One for each of us. I only have one. No, it it uh, it did what I pref would have preferred, which is we have one mantis that's going to have flight and dam. That's nice. That's nice. A seven two flying mantis with dam building, card pulling, flying. Draw mantis on turn one. Sky is taking fourteen damage. Not now, there's not. I didn't click on the bleach, you dummy. I mean, Magpie's Lens, I'm realizing, lets you draw your one turn KOs. That's so good. We drew the Mantis. So I will play the Mantis, I will end the fight, and we will move on. I will draw a. I'll draw a Mantis. And give me my Warren. And you might as well give me my Sparrow. You know what? <laughs> Give me my other mantis. It's a corner mantis, but I'll take it. I wish I could sack that, but, you know, whatever. That's the weak mantis anyways. It being in the corner doesn't matter. Yeah, who needs draw? You just make your own draw. I like his go fish where he just adds cards for no reason. Like, okay, bait bucket.
done. Easy. Ah, now we gotta add a card. Deck's getting mighty thick. I gotta be honest, the cockroach is still good because we have infinite bones with the, uh, with two of our different plays. Mainly the, uh, the sparrow, but. We also do get infinite rabbits if we do it correctly. Uh, we don't need more items, so we'll do a, another melding. We'll, we'll, we'll put the cockroach on something. Give me an infinite, uh, Go for infinite bones from the cockroach, I suppose. Uh, or goat on the cockroach. That way, it sacrifices for three blood, but we have nothing that really has a high blood requirement right now. This will just like make a super infinite cockroach. Pays for itself. Hey, you never know, we might actually need the card. Also, also we can, <laughs> it doesn't matter because we can kill him on turn one. We've got the freaking magpie lens. We know what we're gonna draw. We don't draw a mantis. Oh, sorry, actually we drew a mantis. I just had to pick it. This is like the least, oh, we actually drew it anyways, but like this is the least scary turn one fight I've ever had. Like it. <laughs> Okay, uh, I guess I will take my, my direwolf. I'll take a mantis. I will take a black goat. I will play the smoke. I will play the black goat. I will turn the black goat into a direwolf pup and I will end my turn. Cockroach solos the moon. Yeah, I, I have to remember that. I always think that the moon will hit you if there's no creature in front of it, but if there's even one creature in front of the moon, it won't hurt you at all. I always forget that fact. Also, we can solo the moon because I'm just gonna erase the moon. <laughs> I'm gonna bleach it like I always do when we get the bleach and we never use it up to this point in the run. See ya. All right, and now we're just gonna hit the face. Kurgo says the moon is kind of sad for a boss fight. It, I've never had the moon be the problem. Like getting to the moon is the problem. Not only the fights before the boss, but the boss itself fires lots of high damage enemies at you with the, the early mole combined with Amalgam Mantis God. The, uh, the death cards that come your way. Like, that's the blocker. The moon. The moon, like, you just play your cards. Betting the moon gets a buff. I hope the moon gets a buff, because right now it's not really doing that much. Yeah, so, so many misplays. Fun run, though. The plus one, plus one, more difficult, didn't really matter that much on this run, but I think that's because we had a good units, good cards, and that little infinite play with the Warren and the Sparrow. And when we had one, we weren't worried because we had infinite blockers. You know, have the Warren, have infinite blockers and infinite free rabbits to play your cards and fill the board. Have the Sparrow, you have infinite... Uh, Ants that you can generate as long as you have like rabbits you can toss out there for free or bone cards. That was a bone generator for us. Uh, we didn't care uh, about which one we drew first. We just wanted one or the other. I barely leave the apartment, save for the odd dinner out with mom. But last night was an exception. I went to Comics Land to play a Secrets of Legendaria draft. Legendaria? Is it weird that I brought the disc with me? I felt uncomfortable being apart from it. I ended up ripping a foil sweaty dragon, but lost the first match to that weird dude who wanted to record it for his YouTube channel. 
like he actually bought a camcorder on a shaky looking tripod to the shop. Brought. How is that allowed? It's, um, it's, uh, our Carter friend. Red Heart. I don't know what that sigil means. The value represented with this sigil will be equal to the number of sacrifices made during your turn. Also, at the end of the owner's turn, Red Heart will move in the direction inscribed on the sigil. So if you have an infinite sacrifice play, this could be could do a lot of damage. If you don't sacrifice it, sacrifice anything on that turn, it's going to do zero. For two blood, I don't know how I feel about that. Challenged unlock. Cards in your starting deck have the annoying sigil. It makes the enemies do one more damage. This doesn't seem that bad because you're going to remove a lot of these cards anyways. And also the amount of damage that the enemy does is not often relevant for flyers. It is. But if your unit has like one HP, it's just going to tank the shot regardless. So, yeah, that doesn't seem that bad. Could be terrible in certain fights, especially against flying enemies. But um, and I guess if you ever do like a, a merging you will merge and that sigil will be maintained through the merging, but you know, it is what it is. I think you're just going to have to accept that you might take a little bit more damage or you might lose a unit, but uh, I think it's not that bad for now. For those of you on YouTube, thank you very much for watching. Like the video if you've enjoyed it, subscribe for more. Check me out on Twitch for when I go live. Support the channel at the various links below in the video description. And I hope to see you here again for the next run of Inscription.